Hello everybody. Today we're going to be talking about is Elvis really dead? There are inconsistencies in the reports. We will be looking at that today. This will be part one of the series. If you guys are interested in this information and think it's great quality and worth your time, subscribe to the channel and favorite this video and send it to the YouTube logarithm and hit the alerts button for new uh, videos like this and share this video everywhere. I hope you guys enjoy it. All right. I have received several copies of the certificate of death from the office of the medical examiner. This further complicates matters. The name is spelled correctly. Elvis, A-R-O-N. One variation is the same copy that lists the body weight at 170 pounds. Elvis was said to be around 250 pounds at the time of his death. Another copy was the weight was missing. At 170, he would look, um, would have looked like an old adult, oh no, Adonis he was once. In other words, he would have been as thin and, um, I, you know, godlike as he once was. Back in like, you know, 1972 or whatever, when he was co in concert, he was in tip top shape and he was at 170 pounds. Elvis always maintained his weight at 170 pounds, unless he was off for a while, not shooting or co in concert. Most of the time, he kept his weight at 170 pounds. I wondered about the weight. Whose weight was listed? Whose body was weighed? I refer again to the columnist, James Bacon, who wrote about the controversial oddity. One controversy that refuses to die is whether Elvis Presley really did die. You would be amazed at how many people think Elvis still lives. Apropos of the uh, controversy, I have obtained a copy of Elvis's death report. It only seems to make things worse. The report on the county medical examiner in Memphis, Tennessee, lists Elvis's weight at 170 pounds. A call to the examiner's office reports that the, co the corpses are weighed and any variation would depend upon how much food the dead man had in his stomach when found. Everyone had talked. Uh, I have talked to who saw Elvis in those last days put his weight well over 200 pounds. One even had it as high as 250 pounds. So if we look at this photograph of him and a motorcycle or um, a photograph of him on his one of his last performing tours, he doesn't look like he's 170 pounds. So now that we got over that hurdle about the differences in his weight, have you saw those two photographs that I shared earlier? That one on the motorcycle and one on his last tour. He didn't look light. He looked over 200 pounds. Okay. All right. It also lists that family consent was required for the autopsy. Usually when someone is found dead unattended in an autopsy, the autopsy is automatic. At least it was when I was a police reporter. The cause of death listed is hyperintensive cardiac vascular disease with audial sclerotic heart disease. It also states that Elvis had been playing racquetball in the early morning of the day he died. For someone who had a heart condition, who had that heart condition, racquetball seems to be a strange game to play. He was last seen at 8 a.m. and his body was discovered by his girlfriend, Ginger Olden, at 2 p.m. the same day. I average about two to three calls a day from all over the country from people who sound like ordinary Elvis fans. They all believe Elvis faked his own death so he could have a normal life. Weird. 
So that was pretty interesting how, you know, the last he's seen alive was at 8 a.m. Ginger finds him at 2 p.m. You know? And if he had a heart condition like that, or even, like, signs of a heart attack, he would have had heart pain. He would have complained about his heart racing. He would have had pain in his arm. He would have complained to Ginger that his arm hurt or he was in pain and he was going to take some aspirin or something on that idea. But he didn't say he didn't appear to be in pain when he told her he was going to the bathroom. So there would be an inconsistency right there. I'd be question, questioning that. There was another thing and I haven't, I'm going to stop this for a minute. There's another thing that Linda Hood Sigmund had put out. And that was the fact that when they found his body, they said it was already in rigor mortis, um, which is already in the stage of death. And that takes like roughly five hours or more for the body to get into that state. Which means that if he had died um, when they said he did, he wouldn't be in rigor mortis yet. Because he would have had to die at 9 a.m. But she found, and she has evidence, that he was up and awake. And he even signed for a registered letter or a registered mail at 9.30 in the morning. So, I will put that up here in a little bit. So that's proof. So if you see that little document, it has the time stamped when he signed for that letter. And that was 930 in the morning. It takes five hours roughly for your body to hit rigor mortis. So there's a big question there. How could he get into rigor mortis so fast? All right. So there's a lot of questions involving his death and finding him. And all that kind of thing. So I'm going to continue. The same report was shown visually by Geraldo Rivera on ABC's 2010 20 entitled The Cover Up of the Death of Elvis Presley in 1979. This leads me to believe the certificate with 170 pound weight may be the earlier of the two because James Bacon of 2020 are reputable sources and would have checked it out. However, in 1978, Ken LaFoley wrote an article for the Windsor Star in Toronto concerning the medical examiner's report. My copy was handed to me in the office of Dr. Dan Warlick, and when I glanced at it long enough to see little it said, I asked him if he had examined the body itself. He said, of course, he said bridling a little i am the chief medical investigator in his jurisdiction in that case could you tell could he tell me some of the things the official report had left out to begin with the simplest why was the space after w uh, after weight left blank and how much did the man weigh Anything that's not on that form is private property of the Presley family, he said. They signed the autopsy request under Tennessee law that mean they own the results. They're locked in a vault in the Baptist Memorial. Even his weight, even his weight, he said and smiled. Okay. So someone had asked on the group, the Facebook group, a question about his autopsy reports. Now, supposedly the autopsy is sealed until 2027, which would be his 50th anniversary of his death. Why would they seal autopsy reports in the first place? That that would be the one the first question I would ask. Number one, they didn't seal Lisa Marie's, they didn't seal Ben's. You can get those offline. But why did they seal Elvis's? That's a good question. Okay. Also, there are more than one medical report obviously written out. There was two of them for some reason written out. And the funny thing is, or the strangest thing is, I don't think she covers it in here. 
because I think it was after this that she got a hold of one. But I will give you a hint. When Elvis did call her in 1988 and she taped a telephone call, he said that he would send her some ammunition to help her out. Because he knew she was having a hard time. Especially when she went to the On the Geraldo show. And um, uh, Larry King Live. And a couple other shows. Where she was getting really attacked. For saying that Elvis staged his death. And all that. Based on her evidences and her findings. He sent Gene Smith with a copy of that medical examiner's report. And he said, have someone analyze the handwriting on it. So she did. And they determined that Elvis wrote his own medical examiner's report out. Okay? It's his handwriting on his medical examiner's report. Now, why there's two of them with two different weights, or why one has no weight and one has weight, well, I guess the story goes, according to... Uh, Linda Hood, Sigmund, or Elvis found a live documentary. He said, and I will link that to this video so you guys can see it. All right, it'll be up on the little thing up there. You can click on it. He said that he originally filled it out and Dr. Nick was supposed to give it to his secretary to type out and she didn't have time and just filed it away. So, I guess there's like another report that's made or signed or filled in by the doctor at the back and the bottom. Um, and that's not Elvis's handwriting. But this was all planned out ahead of time. And they decided what they were going to use as his death reason. Because he had no symptoms of a heart attack. And he was playing racquetball like a normal person. So if he had problems with an irregular heartbeat or anything like that, he would have had symptoms of having a hard time breathing, having a hard time keeping up, complaining of chest pain, complaining of arm pain or something. And he had no win, no, none of that. And I'm surprised that they didn't even question that. And there's some other inconsistencies with this whole thing. So we're going to continue. All right. Although it is not clear which report was first, it is clear that something is wrong with the weight. I also find it strange that there are two birth certificates and now two death certificates. If there is a death certificate at all, both of these certificates bear the date October 20th, 1977, which is two months after August 16th. 1977. A death certificate is issued almost immediately so that family can collect insurance. Upon checking up on the still another enigma, I was told that the original death certificate had disappeared and this disappearance was not noted until October 20th when a new one was issued. And it has also been reported that no insurance was collected. There are other inconsistencies. The medical examiner's report states that the body was found unclothed. Yet in all the books I have read, it states Elvis was wearing pajamas, although the color of these pajamas differ. In Elvis, We Love You Tender, it says Elvis was found wearing a pair of blue cotton pajamas. The book Elvis states Elvis was clothed in pajamas, a yellow top, and blue bottoms. A third book says Elvis was wearing black pajamas. In the documentary, he said that he was wearing blue pajamas. Actually, the body double was wearing blue pajamas. Okay, so this is a lot of discrepancies. Okay. So did anyone actually see the body of Elvis? I mean, you would think Ginger would say, oh yeah, he was wearing this color and 
Joe Esposito would say, yeah, he was wearing this color. And they know because they both saw him in the bathroom. And then, the, obviously, the hospital says that he's wearing this color. That, that to me, is kind of weird. Very weird. When did you be questioning that? I would. Elvis, we love you tender, talks about Elvis being alone in the bathroom where he dropped his book and kneeled over into his face. That book quotes Ginger Eldon as having opened the door and found Elvis sprawled across the floor. This sightings um, changes somewhat in the book. Elvis in regards to Ginger's discovery of the body. Finally, she opened the door and peeped inside. What she saw was Elvis doubled up face down on the floor with his buttocks elevated in a fetal position. Clearly, he had been sitting in the black leather chrome chair reading and had toppled forward onto the floor. The book was still lying on the chair. How could Elvis be doubled up and sprawled? How could he be reading a book toppled forward and then the same book was found lying on the chair? He would either have been reading the book or sitting on it or having fallen forward with chest pains would have been meticulously enough to, in the throes of a heart attack, fall, uh, place the fallen book on the chair. Both Albert Goldman and Elvis and Dan David Stanley say that it was the book The Shroud of Turin by Ian Wilson, a book about Jesus and the evolution of Christian theology that Larry Geller had given Elvis as a present. As the book Elvis had been reading at the time of his death, I purchased this book and discovered it was not copyrighted until 1978, a year after Elvis's death. Hmm, very interesting. Ginger Alden also stated that the thought of Elvis being dead never entered her mind. Albert Goldman described the scene in Elvis whereby Joe Esposito was called. When he turned Elvis over onto his back, he heard a slight sound convincing him that Elvis was still breathing. Yet the medical examiner's report states the body was found dead and, and rigor mortis had set in already. Now, I'm going to tell you that an Elvis found alive video, he says he was given an injection. Okay, so actually the book here, uh, uh, Truth About Elvis Aaron Presley, said he had an injection that would probably give him like a comatose type state that made him look dead. And then Elvis studied breathing techniques and he could breathe like very, very, very lightly because of all the um, um, religions that he um studies and we'll go into that and she covers it quite well in this book or the other book so we can go into that another day but it was very interesting so i'm going to say that having that one breath was probably the truth uh but yeah so all the other books seem to disagree on what was being done for elvis some say tubes went down his throat into the lungs and administered air directly uh, and an intracardiac injection of adrenaline is usually popped directly into the heart and catheters can be run into the arms through which drugs can be run to increase blood pressure. Elvis's stepbrother David Stanley recalls seeing no injections or catheters. If all else fails, there was a cardi um there is a cardioverter, two powerful electrodes um to opposite sides of the heart, sending a jolt of electricity that can resynchronize the electrical impulses of the heart. That was not attempted, at least not at the house. 
Now, usually if someone is found in cardiac arrest in a, hospital, in a house, usually the paramedics are there. They have some instruments to help them, try to revive them. They use all kinds of different things that they have. Breathing machines, oxygens, all that kind of thing. Um, I think they did have oxygen, but... And two paramedics called to the scene have stated they did not recognize the body as that of Elvis Presley. When Ken LaFoley, the Windsor Star on Toronto, looked at the homicide report on Elvis Presley, he saw the following. Offense report number 2793, a subject Elvis Presley, uh, offense DOA, Okay, the, the above subject was brought to Baptist Hospital after being found unconscious in the upstairs bedroom of his home. Now, it's his bedroom. The subject was transported by fire department ambulance and, and the DOA at the hospital and was DOA at the hospital. Homicide and medical examiner did make the scene at the hospital and at 3764 Elvis Presley Boulevard. Status is pending and then sergeant. So when Mr. LaFoley asked to see the rest of the report, he was told that was classified confidential. The net result of his report was that there was a conspiracy of silence surrounding the death of Elvis Presley. The medical examiner's report states that Elvis was last seen to arrive at 8 a.m., although Ginger Eldon has stated in some books that it was 9 a.m. Moot point, perhaps, but it was another inconsistency. Ginger stated that she discovered the body at 2 p.m., which is consistent with the medical examiner's report under the listed under Discovery 1400 Hours. Yet, in another interview, which appeared in U.S. Magazine, dated in August 24, 1984, Ginger Alden said she found the body at 12.30 p.m., not 2 p.m. According to this report, it appears that, although the body was discovered at 1,400 hours, there was a time lapse of an hour or a half until the police were notified at 15.30, which is 3.30 in the afternoon. And the medical examiner notified at 1600, which is 4 o'clock. It also reads that Elvis was pronounced dead at 330 to 1530. If it's true that Elvis was DOA and in rigor mortis and had set in, why so long at pronouncing him dead? If the true... Uh, if the truth is that Elvis was found unconscious, then how could rigor mortis have set in? Why does the homicide report state Elvis was found unconscious while the medical examiner's report states he was found dead? And if he was found dead, why would it take so long for the pronouncement? Okay. So those are good, viable questions. There's an inconsistency with times is inconsistency with many things how he was found where he was found this one said he was found in the bedroom this and he was found in the bathroom some say that he had his pajamas on and he was lying unconscious in the bathroom some said that he had his pants pulled down and he was in fetal position in the bathroom um, I'm going to say, um, according to what, um, Elvis Found Alive documentary said, he was given an injection and he was lying on the floor to make it look like he had fallen out of the chair or something. And we don't know what book he was reading, but it definitely wasn't The Shroud of Turin. So I decided to end this video here because it got very long and I will continue this topic on the next episode. So we look forward to seeing you at the next episode. Please remember to subscribe, hit the alerts button for future posts 
and favorite this video and send it along the logarithm. And you guys have a great night, and we'll see you later. Bye!